For centuries, wax seals have been used to protect the integrity of a document or to kind of serve as a return address and show who sent it. So it also was a form of authority. In recent years, wax seals have kind of returned in popularity, not for the necessity that we had them before, again, for just kind of keeping the integrity. If a wax seal was broken, that meant that the contents inside had been read and potentially changed. Now it's used more as a decorative element. And even though it's been a tradition that's been used for years and years and years, again, centuries old, it can be a little intimidating when you're approaching your first wax seal. I have been working with wax seals professionally for several years now, um, both as a wedding stationer and just as an educator and a hobbyist who just enjoys using wax seals. After all of this experience, I've definitely picked up a couple of tricks along the way, and I'm excited to share those with you today. In this video, I'm going to go through all of the basics of working with wax seals. So this is perfect if you're a beginner to wax seals. We'll cover everything from the most basic process of creating your wax seals, what supplies we should use, also including my tips and tricks for really having that good crisp seal. So let's cover what type of wax to use first. Now I'm often asked about crayons or candle wax when creating a wax seal. And honestly, I don't recommend them. And here is why. <laughs> Even though it's called wax and it does have a lot of the chemical makeup, it's just in a different format. So these particular styles are designed to disintegrate. And especially candle wax will leave an oily residue on your paper that's just kind of not cute. And candle wax usually will kind of break down anyway. Same thing with crayons. So again, these are things that are designed to disintegrate or leave a mark. So I don't really recommend that. Instead, you wanna use melting wax that is specifically designed for this style of work. So for one thing, it won't transfer onto other papers, to your other envelopes, and it um, will hold a really good shape. So even though I just rubbed that against that paper, it didn't really cause a big dent or cause any problems with the wax. Um, you can also use melting wax beads. Again, you wanna use something that is specifically designed for making a wax seal, not something that you would use to wax your leg hair. <laughs> um, and you want to look for something, a particular style that is a little bit flexible. So more modern style wax has a little bit of a give and a bend to it so that it can go through our more modern style postal machines without being broken. And again, it doesn't transfer, so that's good. You can also use like a traditional hot glue stick. I have not found it to be quite as strong as the sealing wax, but I have heard from some of you that you can mix a crayon with a glue stick and get a fun colored effect. I have not personally tested that out yet, but if you would like to see me test it out, let me know in the comment section and I'll make that happen for you. Now, just because you are buying wax that is claimed to be designed for wax seals, you really wanna test it out before you start sending anything in the mail or use it for your invitations, especially if it's a good deal on Amazon. Not to knock Amazon, but I found that it is best to go with tried and true trusted companies. So I have a couple that I've linked in the description box down below. I've had a lot of people have problems with either their wax bleeding or ruining their paper or breaking off on the stamper or not coming off the stamper. So make sure that you are starting with the quality supplies for the wax. Before you buy anything else, I would say spend the most on your wax um, because if you have poor quality wax, your stamp just will not turn out. Okay, I'm getting off my soapbox, but now that you have good quality wax in hand, it is time to talk about techniques. Now there's two main techniques. The first one is using a spoon. This is my favorite spoon. It has the double handle, so it rests really nicely on my candle holder, and I just love how easy that is. It's pure brass, so it's a little bit of an investment, but I think it's worth it. Now for a candle, I've had a lot of questions about this. I just use a jar candle like this that's kind of burned down a little bit. Um, you want it to be at least halfway burned out, if not more, because you want to be careful not to have the flame touch your spoon. 
or it will burn the wax. Now, the most popular method and what I like to use when I'm working on a client's piece is a glue gun. You want a regular size glue gun, but the most important thing is that you want it to have a low heat setting. Um, so, or at least be marked as a low setting gun. Again, because you don't want your wax to get too hot, it can burn or it can get bubbly um, and cause some problems down the road. So those are the main two methods for making them yourself. Now let's say you are going to be stamping a ton of invitations and it's just kind of overwhelming. Get these self-adhesive seals. So this is where the professionals stamp it for you. Um, they stamp it in real time, at least if you're working through Artisire. So it's all hand stamped and it comes with this little adhesive sticker on the back. So this is really strong. It should last through the mail just as well as a traditional wax seal would. It's very strong. I've used these specifically many, many times. I've made my own, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and if you were to get a letter from me or a package, it is most likely stamped with one of these stamps. So these are a great option if you want the look, but don't have the time. All right, let's talk about the stampers themselves. Now I prefer a pure brass stamper. So the part that's actually touching your wax, it gives you a really nice crisp impression. You can capture more of those little details. And it also cools pretty quickly, which will make the whole process a lot faster. Now, if you're gonna go with the brass handle, the whole stamper will warm up a little bit more or hold more heat, so that can kind of cause some problems, but it is a beautiful look. Now, if you don't have the money for that or you just wanna explore with a couple different ideas, I do have a tutorial for a DIY wax seal stamper that I'll have linked in the description box. It is super fun, super easy to make. You can make a couple of these in an afternoon. They don't last as long as the brass, but they are so fun to play with. Now, in order to prep your stamper, what you wanna do, especially if you have one like this, where there is a definite top and bottom to it, is you want to mark where the bottom of your stamper is. So what I do is I just take a regular pencil, I find exactly where I want the bottom of my stamper to be. So I'm just gonna kind of trace down and then I mark it with a small line. Now this pencil will not transfer onto my wax and even if it does, a quick wipe and it's gone. Um, and that way it will show me as I'm placing the stamper down when I can't see the stamp itself, show me which part should be pointed straight down. So having that on there is just a really simple trick that makes life a whole lot easier. Now, Artisar just released their latest design improvement. You can see there's a little etched mark on the stamper itself. So I love that my latest design, Maybell, which is this Lily of the Valley stamper, you don't have to place that line yourself. It comes already ready to go. Now, if you haven't seen any of my other wax seal videos, then you might not know that I recommend using some ice to chill your stamper on. So keeping your stamper nice and cool is the key to moving quickly throughout your wax sealing process. So you just kind of place it on the ice. I recommend having it in a baggie to just avoid any moisture collection um, on the stamper itself that will cool the brass down in order to create a very smooth, very quick process. I like to put it in this cute little tray because I liked my workspace to be a little bit more fancy, but it also, again, kind of keeps any condensation um, contained. All right, now that we've broken down our supplies, we are ready to start making our beautiful stamps. Let's clean off our work surface and get started. First, we're going to place our stamper onto the ice so that it's already chilling and ready to go. The first technique we're gonna do is with this hot glue gun. So again, it's a regular size and the heat setting is set too low. Now, I like to include a towel or a microfiber cloth to just brush off my stamper before I place it. And I'm gonna do this tutorial on some envelopes. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to seal your envelope. So you can lick it, you can use double-sided tape, whichever method you wanna do, but it will help it to be kind of extra secure. I have found that about one, one and a half pumps is just about perfect for that one inch diameter seal, um, and which is the size that I primarily use. If you're gonna be using an oval or a square, you're gonna need a little bit more. If you're using a very petite stamp, you're going to be using a little bit less. So once I kind of found the bottom, that etched mark on the bottom of my stamper, I placed it down very gently but firmly and trying to put it in the very center of my wax. 
After about 10 or 15 seconds, you are ready to release your stamper and place it back on the ice. See how beautiful that impression is? This never gets old, guys. Let's do it one more time just to make sure that we get the technique. So again, I do recommend that, especially if you're gonna send something in the mail, you seal your envelope first. Next, you're gonna take your glue gun and keeping it close to your envelope, you're gonna pour it. Now you'll see that I am moving the wax back and forth as I'm pouring it. This will very heavily influence the overall shape of your seal once it's done. So if you love that perfect circle, pour it in as perfect a circle as you can. We're gonna find that etched area where our bottom is, line it up, and then we're gonna place it. So see how there's kind of that little blob of wax that's off to the side? If you prefer a more organic, more hand poured, more vintage antique feel, then you want to have kind of that messy pour where you're kind of moving the gun around quite a bit. If you want that perfect circle, keep it as perfect as possible as you pour. But see, still a beautiful result, perfectly straight up and down, nice crisp edges. Now this has been fun, but what if you wanna change your wax seal color? Well, you can simply take a new color, put it into the gun after your current color, and just allow it to slowly take over. This takes about two full sticks to do, and you will have a marbled effect for a while, which can be fun if it's intentional. Or you can actually take a regular hot glue stick and use that to feed out the old color and then welcome in the new. It takes about two sticks, but it's a lot cheaper than using your sealing wax. If you know that you're gonna be switching your colors a lot, I actually recommend having a glue gun for each color, especially if you're a stationer and you're gonna be switching around between different clients a lot. It's really so much easier and will save you a ton of time. All right, let's move on to our spoon method. So this is our kind of our more traditional melting method where we will be using a candle and our brass spoon. You're still gonna start by chilling your wax stamper in the ice, and then you want to make sure that when you place your spoon onto the candle, the flame is not touching the spoon itself. So you can see it will be warming it, not cooking it. For this technique, I'm gonna be using these sealing wax beads. I love using these because two is the perfect amount for having enough wax for a one inch stamper and um, having enough to kind of push it off of the spoon because you do need a little extra to get it going. You can also cut up pieces of your sealing wax sticks, although be very careful when you're doing that. And this is also a great way to recycle old stamps that didn't work out quite the way that you were hoping they would. Now, I have never timed how long it takes the wax to melt, but I'd say 30 seconds to a minute. Once that wax has melted, you're going to slowly pour some of it off. I like to use kind of the frying pan method if you're thinking of like just laying an egg down, I'm just kind of gracefully pouring it out. I find that that gives me a lot more control, even though it's not as fancy as like the TikTok super high pour. Um, it's just more likely that everything is going to turn out. Then I'm going to take my stamper, line up that line with the bottom of my envelope and carefully place it down. Now, just like with the hot glue gun, the way that you pour this will heavily influence the overall result. I like it to be fairly even and intentional, even though I like the organic edge. Um, so I like that kind of frying pan method where we're just kind of sliding everything off. If you want it to be a little bit more messy, get a little more messy with your pour. And there she is, beauty and therapy in the form of antique gold wax. <laughs> Let's try a slightly different angle this time. So again, I've sealed my envelope. All the rules from before still apply. I'm going to take my antique gold melted wax I'm gonna do a slightly messier pour. You'll see how I'm kind of zigzagging it. This will affect the overall look of how it turns out in the end. So I'm kind of waiting for this to dry and see how I got those kind of little hairs of wax. Let those stay there. If you try and pull them off when the wax is still hot, it will create this snag that's not super cute in your overall stamper. Now, if you get a little air bubble like I did, I found that if I'm real fast, I can quickly pop it and it melts back in and doesn't usually cause a problem. 
Um, if you're not fast, it will create this blemish on your, kind of like a zit on your wax seal, and it's not super cute. So after the 10 seconds have passed and your stamper is nice and cool, you'll remove your stamper. And this is when you take care of those little wax hairs, as I like to call them. Um, you just kind of pick them off and you won't even be able to see it. Now, when you wait till they're cool, that's really easy and you're not ruining anything. If you do it while it's hot, it might pull some of the wax out and then you'll have kind of this little arrow pointing out, which is just not super cute. <laughs> I keep saying cute, but there is a beautiful wax seal and then there's like the ones that look like they haven't finished puberty yet. We don't want to have the stray hairs and the pimples. We want to have beautiful polished wax seals. So let's say you want to pre-make your wax seal. So you don't want to put the hot wax directly on your envelopes. You want to be able to test it out beforehand, but you still want to make it. You don't necessarily want to order them handmade already, you wanna be able to be part of that process or maybe you're customizing them, but how do you make them? My favorite technique is to use a silicone baking sheet. So this is obviously a mini one, but you can get a very large one like they have in kitchen supply stores and you're going to make it right on top of that. So you're gonna pour your wax just like you would on your envelope. So just get about the same size and you're going to place your stamper down in the same way and you're going to have like this beautiful wax seal and it pops right off. You can also use something like a marble countertop or I've used the back of some of my silver platters before. You just want something that is non-porous that um, won't, that can get hot, but will also cool quickly so that your wax seal will kind of pop right off. And you can use whatever technique you prefer. If you want to use the hot glue gun method, you can use that. If you want to use the spoon, you can do that. And it should both just kind of pop right off for you. This can be an awesome way to make like bulk wax seals when you know you're going to be using um, just a ton of them. <laughs> and so you can get the effect and you can just make a whole bunch like this. And again, it just pops right off and you have this beautiful pre-made wax seal. That's when you grab your double-sided stickers and you place it on the back. Give it a good little rub to make sure it's nice and secure. And when you're ready to use it, you just take off the second protective side and reveal the sticker that's underneath. So I don't know if you can see that little shine, but that is your sticker. Now there are really no limits to the ways that you can play with these techniques. So you can place items either before or after you pour your wax in order to get different effects and explore different ideas. Now I have a full video tutorial on all these techniques and more linked in the description box if you're interested in exploring different ideas. Now, if you want more details on a specific process, I have tons of wax seal videos. I'm always coming up with a new one based on your different questions. So if there's something that you um, are wondering that wasn't answered in this video, feel free to leave that in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer that for you. I hope that you are having a wonderful, wonderful day. And until next time, happy stamping. And the dogs are out. <laughs> ah, go to bed, fruit, fruit.